JD is one of the most amazing professional ultra runner. She lives in France in the Mercatur Mountains. Her family is from Maine. You know, she's now a four-time UTMB finisher and a UTMB champion, which is just an exceptional accomplishment. She's a very cerebral type of thinker and strategist, setting the stage for the next generation of what's possible uh, for ultra running. Katie really challenged herself to move to France with a totally different culture and uh, still was really able to push her training to the limit and find uh, herself uh, really uh, into the tri running scene in Europe. What was interesting in Katie's preparation towards Western States is that she changed her way to train. She used to train more in the mountains and she changed her training lifestyle to train more on rolling terrains. And I think that was a big commitment and a strong uh, choice towards her goal. Well, Western States is the first 100-mile trail race in the world. It was born originally as a horse riding race, and in 1974, uh, Gordy Anslay and his horse came up lame. It was a sick horse, so he chose to run the distance on foot, and that began the tradition. Well, Western States has in total about 19,000 feet of climbing and 21,000 feet or roughly 7,000 meters of descending. Finishes on our uh, track and it's now one of the most uh, desired races in the world to run because of uh, its history. This race is the 100 mile ultra race in the United States and it always brings the most competitive field of runners in the US, just like UTMB brings the most competitive group of runners to France. And so in my mind, those are the two most competitive races in the world for ultra running. And it's definitely my first big race in the US. Where is the runner check-in? Oh, let me tell you, it's in a whole different place. Oh. Yeah. So just go down there, okay. just keep going, kind of keep to your right. The biggest change that my win at UTMB brought was just like this extra confidence in myself because to know that I was able to do something like that for sure gives me a lot of confidence moving forward. But with that is also added pressure when I go to another race as being someone who won UTMB. No, no, no. Katie's performance in the UTMB was incredible. I think it was one of the top two or three times ever in UTMB history. Um, it was a it, just an absolute fantastic race for her in uh, in 2022. UTMB is an amazing race. It's one of the most awe-inspiring environments you could ever experience. The competition is super deep. And then there's this energy around UTMB with the ambiance of the crowd. I always kind of held UTMB in my mind as being like this event that was like in a lot of ways really overwhelming. It's literally like a Tour de France for trail running. It's 100 miles in the mountains overnight. Which can make it very difficult for a lot of runners where traditionally 100 mile runs in Western States starts in the morning. Western States obviously has a pretty different course profile than UTMB. The UTMB has got a lot more climbing. It'll be hotter, it's going to be a lot faster, a lot less hiking. So just a bunch of different factors that will be quite different from UTMB, which I'm quite familiar with at this point. And then how do you like it tied on? So I was using a hair elastic. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Just because then it's yeah. easier to get off. Like, because then you don't have to untie it. Then you just do that. Okay. Western States is different from uh, UTMB and many of the European races in that it allows pacers to run with the runner from mile 62 or 100 kilometers Forest Hill to the finish. For my duties with Katie, it was really to be there as a, a trail companion and um, taking her mind off uh, some of the challenges that can happen in the final uh, miles of a 100 mile race. Red star and then, and then you have the first cruise stop.
Yeah. So one of the big differences between UTMB and Western States that I did learn is that there is no required gear for Western States, so I might not need as much as I had planned. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good, but a little uncertain. But that's also what makes these kind of races fun, because we don't really know what's going to happen, and there's so many possibilities. I mean, my main goal is to really just enjoy my day, my first Western States. The race is the like final performance of a huge buildup of training. So if I can stand on the start line and know I did everything I possibly could, then there's nothing to be overly concerned about. I didn't have any like set plan. I just was gonna run based on how I felt completely and try not to make too many mistakes and kind of just run smart and enjoy the people that were along the course. Nice job. Nice job. I think the biggest challenge in ultras is always just getting to that point where it becomes really difficult and then just to keep pushing through that and to just kind of keep holding on and convince yourself that it will get better and that you can get through those really hard times. The main driver is just that I love doing this sport and I love training for it and I just have the time and the space to like really focus on this one thing that I care about. That's, that's pretty exciting. When I finally saw I made it, I was just so happy, relieved because I had just been thinking about getting there under 1647 for the last hour. And at least for me, like every ultra, like the last few hours is just like, wow, I can't wait to sit down in a chair and just be able to not be running anymore. 1644, <laughs> Second fastest female performance in the history of the race. You did it. Congratulations. Do you want a jacket or anything? It was really fun to have my family here. This is their first time at one of my races. And they're like much more disconnected from the sport than most people I interact with. So it was pretty special. And to see their support on the on the course and have my sister in the aid stations, it was, yeah, it was just like reassuring to see them everywhere. It was good. It was a long day. <laughs> yeah, a very long day. For your first race? My first race, Mo, my support of a race. Oh my god! You broke the curse. You were amazing. <laughs> I was trying to send the message to you to say like under 16 or nothing, but you went. Oh, <laughs> that, so. How was it? Cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was so fun running with you. Yeah, that part was Thank fun. you. Yeah. Did you run them? Yeah. Nice. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I think every time I come to an event like this or take on a big challenge, it's just that feeling when you're done, even when you have, I don't know, maybe the best day of your life, you're still thinking really in the back of your head like, what if I did this differently? Or like, what if I changed that small thing? And those are the things that keep me wanting to come back. Ladies up here in second place in a time of 16.43.45, Katie Shaw. I made it through this big mark on my calendar and it just feels good that everything kind of came together at the right time and in an even better way than I could have imagined. I think Katie has an amazing future. 
in 100 mile running. I'd love to see perhaps one day she'll have a desire to run the Hard Rock 100. I think she'd be incredibly strong. She's a geologist, so she's at home with rocks and, uh, and the mountains, I would imagine. So it's gonna be exciting to see what she does in the future. Right now, I'm just gonna try to soak in this great performance and this great day and spend some time with my family and then start thinking about what's next in a few weeks. Thank you.